Awesome, thank you very much. Um, so hi everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today for our webinar on Azure Firewall IDPS Deep Dive. My name is Andrew Matho, and I'm a product manager in the Azure Network Security Customer Experience Engineering Team. I am also joined by my colleague Gustavo Modena, who will be my co-presenter and do part of the demo towards the end. Uh, we are excited about this webinar and we are looking forward to showing you the Azure Firewall IDPS capabilities and the features um, on how you can also stop threats and better protect your environment. Also, if we have a time at the end of the session, I will also um, want to answer some of your questions. But meanwhile, uh, during the session, please feel free uh, to post your questions in our Q&A. Uh, we have an excellent team uh, that is ready to answer them. So before I begin, I just want to highlight um, this event. It's called the Azure Network Security Ask Me Anything AMA, uh, which we'll host uh, later this month. Um, this is our first AMA session, and we're looking forward uh, to interact with you as we answer your questions related to Azure Firewall, Azure WAF, and Azure DDoS. Uh, this event will be held on September 26th. It will be on a Tuesday, uh, starting from 8 p.m. 8 a.m. Sorry, uh, Pacific time. So we encourage you to please uh, go to our security community page and also register for the same. Great. So for today's agenda, um, this is what we have in store. We'll have an overview of the Azure Firewall uh, covering its features and capabilities, uh, as well as the three existing firewall SKUs of versions. Uh, next, we'll take a look at the Azure Firewall IDPS and we'll cover the IDPS signatures, uh, configurations, deployment scenarios, um, some performance considerations, and then also finally IDPS monitoring and logging. Uh, lastly, my colleague uh, Gustavo will take us through a demo in Azure portal uh, where we'll see the IDPS in action. Uh, to also call out, you have a great blog on, on Azure for IDPS. You can see it here at the bottom. Uh, it's titled Intrusion Detection and Prevention System IDPS based on signatures. So uh, you can check this out and it further delves into IDPS and how it adds value to protecting your environment. So to begin us off, we begin uh, start off with the Azure Firewall overview. And Azure Firewall, so this Azure Firewall um, is Azure's first party fully managed next generation firewall. Um, it has high built-in, high availability, and also unrestricted cloud uh, scalability. Uh, here we can see um, some of its key features and benefits, which include the network and application traffic filtering. So you're able to filter incoming and outgoing traffic, and Azure Firewall allows uh, one to create and enforce these rules. Uh, so you can filter based on various criteria such as source and destination addresses, ports and protocols. And then for the application rules, um, it supports uh, filtering for specific applications and services uh, such as path services uh, using, of course, these application rules. We also have built-in threat intelligence, um, and this one alerts and denies traffic uh, from and to known malicious IP addresses, FQDNs, and URLs. Uh, it deploys and scales in minutes, so it's able to handle um, incoming throughput even as it grows, and it supports east-west and north-south traffic filtering. Currently, we have three SKUs of versions. Uh, we have basic SKU, which is uh, geared toward the small business enterprises segment. We have the standard SKU, and this is for enterprise and government organizations, and then premium SKU for high security environments. So these SKUs are tailored for different uh, organization, uh, verticals, horizontals rather, uh, of course, with their different features. We will have now Azure Firewall Premium and we'll specifically look at this because this is where our Azure Firewall IDPS resides in. So some of the key features uh, of Azure Firewall Premium include uh, from top to bottom, it includes all the standard uh, firewall capabilities or features. So this includes threat intelligence, uh, network and application rules, outbound SNAT, uh, inbound DNAT support uh, amongst others. 
Uh, within Azure Fall Premium itself, we have TLS inspection, and this TLS inspection um, allows for decrypting uh, of outbound traffic or east-to-west traffic, uh, performing the required uh, value-added security function, and re-encrypting re the traffic uh, which is sent to the original destination. So this gives us the ability to have visibility into encrypted traffic. Uh, we also have support for inbound TLS termination, and this is done when we have an application gateway. So when we deploy the firewall behind the application gateway, we're able to inspect incoming inbound encrypted traffic. So this use case uh, also allows for implementation uh, of the zero trust model and complete network segmentation through end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, within Azure Fall Premium, we have IDPS, which will be the focus uh, again of this webinar. So Azure Fall Premium uh, provides signature-based uh, IDPS, and this allows us um, rapid detection of attacks uh, by looking for specific patterns such as byte sequences in network traffic or known malicious instruction sequences used by malware. We also have uh, URL filtering, and this allows administrator to filter uh, outbound access to specific URLs, not just FQDNs. So this capability also works for both plain text and uh, encrypted traffic if TLS inspection is enabled. Uh, finally, for file premium, we also have web categories, and these allow us to filter uh, outbound user access to the internet, and this is based on categories. So for example, uh, we have categories for social networking, search engines, search engine, sorry, uh, gambling, and this of course also helps to uh, reduce the time spent on managing individual FQDNs and URLs. Uh, finally, we have uh, the feature comparison per scheme. Um, so this enables us, or this table enables us to see uh, the features available for all three Azure file SKUs. And we can see some of the differences listed here. So for example, uh, for basic, like we mentioned, this is geared towards the SMB uh, based organizations. Uh, and this now, uh, based on their requirements, um, we can see it has throughput needs. Maybe customers have throughput needs of up to uh, 250 Mbps. Uh, it will support uh, layer three to layer seven filtering, and it will alert on malicious traffic uh, with the built-in uh, threat intelligence uh, from Microsoft Threat Intelligence. Uh, it's easy to set up. Uh, it's automated deployment. You can deploy as code, uh, with zero maintenance, and automatic updates. And it also supports uh, central management through the Azure File Manager. Uh, for Azure File Standard, uh, so this is recommended uh, for customers looking for layer three to layer seven firewall, and um, also need they need auto scaling to handle peak traffic uh, periods of up to 30 Gbps, as you can see listed here. So it also supports uh, enterprise features such as threat intelligence, DNS proxy, uh, custom DNS, and web uh, categories. And just to note, there's a difference in terms of this when it comes to file premium. Um, so for the standard SKU, it will match the category based on the FQDN. Uh, for premium, it will match the category uh, according to the entire URL for both HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And then, of course, we have Azure File Premium. Uh, and this, like we mentioned, this is recommended to secure highly sensitive uh, applications are also used in organizations that need a high security threshold, uh, such as the payment processing or financial institutions. So it has the advanced threat protection features. So you can see it supports um, IDPS. Uh, we have TLS inspection. And then we also have, of course, URL filtering for the full path. And this is also includes um, SSL termination. So this uh, highlights the key differences between our three firewall SKUs. So having uh, taken a look through the Azure file overview and its features and the SKUs, I will now uh, take a look at the Azure Firewall um, IDPS, and this is now the main part of, of our series webinar. So to begin with, um, just a definition of IDPS. Um, I know we've heard of this uh, network intrusion detection and prevention systems, 
intrusion detection prevention systems. And this basically is a security technology or system uh, that is designed to monitor and analyze and also to protect um, a network from unauthorized access, suspicious activities, and also potential um, security threats. Uh, in general, there are two types of IDPS systems, and these are the signature-based IDPS and the anomaly-based IDPS. So the signature-based uh, IDPS monitors packets moving through our networks and compares them uh, to a database of known attack signature or attributes. Um, so it leverages um, that signature database of well-known anomalies, attack patterns, and exploits um, to be able to detect and stop threats. For anomaly-based IDPS, this uh, does not rely on signatures. Uh, but monitors network traffic uh, for deviations uh, from established baselines. Then it's also able to flag this traffic uh, that is maybe statistically unusual or suspicious and then create alerts to block it. So with that uh, introduction, we now come to the Azure File IDPS. So the IDPS within Azure File Premium um, is signature based. And this IDPS has several characteristics. So we can see it allows for rapid detection um, of attacks and it looks for specific patterns such as byte sequences in the network traffic and also known uh, malicious instruction sequences um, that are used by malware. Um, file premium, uh, the IDPS in file premium, it allows us to detect uh, attacks in all ports and protocols and that's for non-encrypted traffic. And then when we apply TLS inspection, uh, it's able to, TLS inspection of course, we decrypt encrypted traffic and apply uh, IDPS signatures to detect uh, malicious activities. When it comes to the actual um, IDPS signatures and rule sets, um, you have several characteristics. Um, the first one we can see in terms of the signatures themselves, we have over 67,000, um, uh, this should be 67,000 signature rules in over 50 categories. And these categories include uh, malware command and control, uh, we have phishing, um, trojans, detection of botnets, um, informational events, uh, exploits, vulnerabilities. So we cover a very wide range of, of threat categories uh, that are out there today. Um, around 20 to 40 plus new rules are released each day. So this means you have protection against the latest threats, uh, including zero day threats. So these signatures are continuously updated in near real time. Uh, it is fully managed um, by Azure, so you don't need uh, to do anything when it comes to the signatures. Uh, it has low false positive rating, and we do this uh, by using state-of-the-art malware detection techniques uh, such as global sensor network feedback loop. Um, the signatures are also thoroughly tested before release and of course this also helps to further reduce false positives. There's also an emphasis on, on fingerprinting actual malware, uh, command and control and also exploit kits and any in the wild uh, malicious activity missed by traditional prevention methods. So this makes it extremely robust. Um, these signatures, um, they are applicable uh, for both application and network uh, level traffic. So you are able to inspect uh, layer three to seven uh, with the IDPS. Uh, something else, another characteristics is that these signatures have an associated se severity level and assigned priority. Uh, and this indicates the probability um, the signature that the, whether an attack is likely to occur or not. So you can see here the three severity levels from low, medium, and high. So low severity, this is priority three. Uh, this is where uh, we have an abnormal event, um, and this one that is not likely to occur uh, on a network, or it could be an informational event that is logged, and so the probability of an attack is low. Uh, we have medium severity signatures. So this signature indicates um, an attack of a suspicious nature. 
And so this, uh, with this, the administrator uh, can try and investigate further. Then we have high severity, and this uh, severity, signatures with this severity, indicate um, that an attack of a severe nature is being launched. So there is there's really a very high probability that an attack will occur, and the packets do not have any legitimate uh, purpose. So there's no probability that these packets have any you know, useful purpose, and it definitely indicates an attack. So these are uh, some of the char characteristics uh, that we do see for our Azure Firewall IDPS signatures. When it comes to Azure Firewall IDPS configuration, uh, we have a couple uh, of tools uh, available to us within the Azure portal when we navigate to the IDPS uh, tab within the Azure Firewall. So to begin with, we have what we call the IDPS modes. Um, and these IDPS modes determine uh, if the signature is active or not. So there are three modes. Uh, we have the disabled mode. This is when uh, the signature are the signatures aren't enabled on the file. So IDPS at that point is not active. We have the alert mode uh, where you receive alerts uh, when suspicious traffic is detected. So it's only alerting and logging. Then we also have alert and deny. And with this, we'll receive alerts and suspicious traffic uh, is going to be blocked. Um, so these uh, IDPS modes are determined uh, by the following reasons, which you can see here. So they can be determined by the policy mode. Um, so this is derived from the IDPS mode uh, of the existing policy. It can also be defined by the parent policy. So the signature mode is derived from the IDPS mode of the parent policy. Uh, you can also uh, determine the mode by overriding its initial uh, mode status. Um, and we can also see in the demo how you're able to do this. So you can change the mode maybe from alert to alert and deny, uh, depending on the signatures uh, that you want active to start blocking. And then it's also defined by the system. Uh, and with this signature mode is set to alert uh, um, a lot only by the system are uh, due to its category. And then finally, like I mentioned, we also have the overriding. And with this, um, you, may, you may use the override uh, mode, or you may override the initial mode um, to change it to a different mode, uh, depending on what uh, exactly you want to do this. And you can do this through um, the Azure portal, and you can also do this through uh, CLI. So, and this you can use, for example, uh, because we have some signature categories that maybe are defined as alert only. Um, and so by default, traffic matching any of these alert only signatures isn't blocked, even though your DPS mode is set to alert and deny. So you can go and override this and change it to uh, alert and deny mode. We also have, uh, in terms of the configuration, um, two other areas that are of importance to us. We have the IDPS private ranges. Um, and these IDPS private ranges, this is used to define um, the IP addresses, specifically private IP addresses, um, or rather IP addresses that you want inspected by the IDPS. And this comes about because uh, in Azure Fall Premium IDPS, um, private IP addresses uh, or the IP addresses ranges are used to identify if the traffic is inbound, outbound, uh, or even internal, that is east-west traffic. So each signature is applied on a specific traffic direction. Uh, and this um, is usually seen or indicated in the signature rules table. So by default, what happens, only ranges are defined by the RFC 1918 are considered private IP addresses. So if traffic is sent um, from a private IP address range um, to another private IP address range that is considered internal. So you can use the private IP address, uh, so the private IP ranges um, tab within the IDPS to modify um, your private IP addresses. You can also add, as you can see in this screenshot, if you have a public IP address that you're using internally within 
uh, maybe your environment, you can add it within this uh, private AP ranges so that it can be uh, inspected as internal traffic. We also have the bypass list um, and this list, this is used to um, select which IP addresses you do not want to be filtered by IDPS. So it's a configuration uh, that allows you to not filter any, to not filter traffic uh, to any of the IP addresses, uh, ranges, and subnets that you specify within the bypass list. We also have um, Azure, uh, the IDPS deployment scenarios, and majorly we have three um, deployment scenarios. The first one, uh, and this is one of the most common, uh, this is used on for IDPS to inspect uh, spoke to spoke, that is east to west traffic. Uh, it also inspects outbound traffic, and we're also able to inspect traffic coming to and from an on-premises network. So uh, we see customers are deploying maybe the Azure File Premium in a hub and being able to inspect traffic coming in from these directions. Uh, we also have another scenario. Uh, this is scenario two, and this is uh, inspecting traffic, uh, inbound traffic, and then encrypted traffic. Um, so you can also be able to intercept uh, inbound non-encrypted traffic. For example, if you've published maybe a DNS server or a management server, you're able um, to intercept it and add or inspect it with um, the IDPS signatures. So this is for an encrypted traffic. Then have scenario three, and this is uh, one of the most important. With this, you're able to inspect inbound encrypted traffic and we do this by having an application gateway in front uh, of Azure Firewall. So in this scenario, um, the inbound encrypted traffic um, with TLS inspection turned on in Azure Firewall, um, TLS inspection will decrypt this traffic. And if you have IDPS applied, IDPS signatures, I will take effect and inspect uh, this traffic for any malicious activity, and then it will be re-encrypted and finally sent to its destination. So these scenarios um, are some of the most common that you come across uh, depending uh, on, of course, the environment and how you've set it up. Something else uh, just to note also when it comes to the Azure Firewall Premium IDPS um, is the performance of the Azure Firewall. So we usually recommend before, of course, you deploy uh, and use Azure Firewall with the DPS. Um, it's important to plan and test the performance to ensure it meets uh, your organization's traffic throughput expectations. And of course, if, if possible, this testing uh, should attempt to replicate uh, the production environment as close as possible. Uh, we have, as you can see um, in this slide, we have the performance data and all of this data, including the throughput for single connections, uh, is actually in a publicly available document uh, whose reference you can see there at the bottom. So uh, with the performance data, we see uh, the performance when we have uh, Azure Firewall Premium with um, TLS and uh, IDPS, uh, if it's turned on and also when it's turned off. So this is something uh, important to, to note uh, before you start using IDPS. And also just to note um, in terms of the definition, the intrusion prevention, the IPS, this takes place uh, when one or more signatures are configured to alert and deny. Also when it comes to throughput for single connections, uh, we can see here uh, on the table on the right, uh, in terms of um, single TCP connection uh, with IDPS on alert and deny mode, you can get up to 300 um, Mbps. So you can be referring um, to this data to plan and also, of course, to deploy your IDPS within Azure Firewall uh, Premium. Finally, uh, last but definitely not least, uh, how do we monitor um, the IDPS? And for this, we have various tools uh, that we use for monitoring and logging. Um, the first one is the IDPS logs. And these IDPS logs enable us to see uh, IDPS events. So you can configure diagnostic settings within 
um, your Azure for all instance uh, and probably attach it to a log analytics workspace. And from this, uh, you can be able to use uh, various simple queries um, within um, the workspace, of course, to search for ADPS events. So in our example uh, here, you can see uh, one uh, of the queries, the SEFW ADPS signature. Uh, and this is just a query that contains all data plane packets um, that were matched with one or more ADPS signatures. So within uh, the ADPS log entry, you can view uh, as an example, some parameters such as the protocol, source and destination ports, um, the source and destination IPs, uh, which action was taken, um, the category uh, that it fell within ADPS, and of course the severity. Um, and then also we have monitoring of also IDPS events, and you can be able to use the Azure file workbook um, to monitor these IDPS events. So the file workbook, uh, we use this to create visual uh, reports, and you can use it to gain insights into the Azure file events. And some of these insights, of course, also include the IDPS uh, insights. So we have a dedicated IDPS tab uh, where you are able to view IDPS actions. You can view the IDPS actions count, um, the protocol counts. Uh, we also have a specific tab for geolocation where you can be able to view um, the source countries um, that launched uh, the IDPS attacks. Uh, we also have policy analytics and policy analytics uh, within Azure Firewall uh, policy. This allows us to be able uh, to gain insights into, into a rule structure. It provides recommendations and within the policy analytics, we have a specific tab uh, for potentially malicious sources. So within this tab, we have threat intelligence and IDPS. Within IDPS tab, uh, you can be able to view the uh, IP addresses uh, that led to the IDPS events. And with this, you're able to do uh, further investigations and also be able to see uh, recommendations based uh, of that. Great, um, so with that, um, I'm going to stop there and hand it over to my colleague Gustavo, who will now take us through uh, the next section, which is um, the demo. Hey, Andrew. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, I will start sharing the screen for running the demo. Uh, please let me know when you can see my screen. Be able to see it. Thanks, Andrew. So uh, to start with the demo, I would like to cover some of the configurations that you know, uh, Andrew just mentioned, and also show what's the configuration applied to our firewall here for, for this demo, right? So to begin with, we are using an Azure Firewall Premium because that's the only SKU which supports IDPS. So we can see here the uh, premium SKU, and we are also using an Azure Firewall Policy. The Firewall Policy also has to be a Firewall Policy Premium to support the IDPS configuration, right? Um, once we have the FIRO deployed, uh, we need to configure the policy, but in order to have the logs that uh, for, for monitoring and also use the workbooks, we also need to have the, the diagnostic the diagnostic settings configured. So before moving to the policy, I will show what's the configuration that we have here. For the diagnostic settings, uh, you need to create one. Uh, I already have one created here, so I'm just going to edit the setting. And here in the diagnostic setting, we have uh, many different categories, so you can, we can monitor different uh, logs for network application and, and, and all the other logs. But for this specifically demo, we are going to use the ADPS uh, categories, so we can see here the category for ADPS. So this is a, a specific schema for IDPS logs. And in this uh, demo, we are focusing on the logs for the, the new resource specific logs. So Azure Fido has the Azure Diagnostic logs with, with, uh, which we are calling as legacy logs uh, and the resource specific logs that shows, you know, different tables for each one of the logs instead of categories only. And for this demo, we're 
just using the resource specific logs. So it, it has to be enabled in order to see all the logs in the log analytics workspace and also to have your workbook uh, to read the data from the log analytics and give you the information you need for investigation. Okay, let me go back here. Um, okay, so that's it for the file deployment in Azure uh, and diagonal settings. Then I'll move to my policy. In, in the policy, uh, here we have some DNet rules because we are going to demonstrate uh, inbound uh, you know, scanning using Nmap. So the Nmap will try to run some scripts on these four different ports that we have published in the Azure file. And then uh, we also have an application rule that will be used for outbound traffic, right? So in this application rule, we are using uh, the web categories and we are enabling TLS inspection. Uh, just one quick reminder here that in order to enable the TLS inspection on the application rules, you must have uh, previously enabled the TLS inspection on the Azure policy, right? FIDO policy. So in my case, I'm using an uh, uh, auto sign certificate uh, which was created by the by the by the Azure FIDO and that uh, certificate is hosted in a key vault and that's the one that I'm using for the TLS inspection, right? You could be using a, a certificate issued by your uh, own certificate authority. So uh, you would, you know, your clients, your users would trust on the certificates issued by your certificate authority. And then next we have the ADPS. So here in the ADPS, uh, we have four tabs. In the first tab, we have the ADPS mode. So uh, the ADPS can be completely disabled. It can be alert only, uh, which means that if something is, uh, if some traffic is inspected uh, and it, it, a signature is matched, uh, you are going to see a log in your logs, but no action will be taken on that request. So no, nothing will be blocked. And then we have the alert and deny. Uh, these are all global configurations. Once it's configured, uh, it's going to be applied to all the flows on your, uh, on your, you know, going through your firewall. One other thing is that if you are using hierarchical policies, um, you could be enabling the ADPS configuration on a patent policy. Uh, in this case, I'm not using any patent policy, so all the ADPS configurations is on my main policy. Next one, we have the signature rules. Uh, as we describe it uh, in, in the slide decks, we do have more than 60,000 signatures available for many, many different kind of attacks, many different uh, applicable to many different protocols. And sometimes it's really hard to just navigate through the through, through all these tabs, uh, you know, to, to find the specific signature. So there are some filters here that you can use to find uh, specific signatures and see if something is uh, available in Azure FIRO. All these signatures are automatically uh, and completely managed by Microsoft. So every time there is an update, Microsoft is the one uh, making the signatures of, are available so customers don't have to make any changes on their files on importing new signatures or, or anything like that. Uh, if you want to know, let's say, for example, if uh, a specific CVE is covered by uh, by the IDPS in Azure file, you can just copy the CVE ID based on the search tab here. It will look into the database and bring you what's the signature we have for that, right? Then once you find the signature, you can see what's the signature ID, what's the mode of that uh, signature. We can see the one is, uh, this one is, is uh, defined by the policy mode, so it's alert and deny. You'll be able to see the severity, the direction. So uh, this signature is applicable to inbound traffic, outbound traffic, east-west traffic, and so on. Then you can also see what's the group that that signature is part of. So this one is attempted administrator privilege gain. You can see a little bit of the description of the signature, and this is where you'll be able to see the CVE ID, right? And then you can also see the protocol, source ports, destination ports that this signature uh, is, uh, is applicable to, and when was the last update, okay? 
Uh, you can also do the search by using specific signature IDs. So, for example, you can, if you already know, uh, based on the logs you have or based on uh, an investigation you are you you are working on, you can just put the signature signature ID here, and you you find uh, the the signature uh, in in the portal. Uh, for the signatures, as Andrew mentioned, we we can also uh, do some overrides. So, for example, even though my global policy is configured to alert and deny, there are some signatures that are low severity that uh, are set to alert only, and that's defined by the system, right? So, if you want to change the behavior of these signatures and make them, uh, you know, uh, change them from alert to alert and deny, you can also select the signatures, go to edit rules and then here you make the changes accordingly to what you want right so in right now this feature is uh the signature is alert i could change it to alert and deny or even disable the 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 the, the signature when i disable the signature it's, it's important to know that no uh no requests being uh matching this signature will be logged in the in the diagnosis log so you only see logs for the signatures that are set to alert or alert and deny i'm not going to change this right now and then uh you can also use the filters to say hey i just want to see uh what, what depending on the mode assigned to the c uh to the signatures i want to see uh, only the high severity uh, signatures or even I can you know uh, see what are all the the signatures that are uh, uh, under a specific group so you can use all these features to to help you find one other thing that I want to mention here is about the protocol so let's do this one again hold on a sec please One thing uh, which is important to mention is that the, under the protocol, we are going to see what protocol that feature that, that signatures uh, applies to, right? So in this case, we are seeing HTTP. It's important to know that when we see HTTP, it means HTTP and HTTPS traffic, right? So uh, when you when you are uh, the only thing is that you need to make sure that the TLS inspection is enabled and you have the TLS inspection uh, enabled on your application rules to have IDPS working on uh, HTTPS traffic. Okay, so next up is the private IP ranges. As Andrew said, uh, by default, the configuration is uh, and the the FIRO configuration under uh, uses the RFC 1918 uh, IP ranges to, uh, to to apply the signatures to to uh, as internal IP or private IP addresses, right? If you are using some IP addresses as private IP, but those IP addresses are not part of the RFC 1918, what you can do, you can just unselect this checkbox here and then add all the IP ranges that you are using as private IP addresses. Once you apply this configuration, all the requests coming from or to those IP addresses will be read as internal traffic only, right? So all the signatures uh, that are uh, that have you know the direction set to uh, internal traffic or any traffic will be applied to that, uh, considering these IP ranges are private IP ranges. Not going to change this right now. And then we have the bypass list, right? So the bypass list, you can create uh, the list of, you know, uh, you can add here, for example, if you don't want to have uh, IDPS signatures or, uh, you know, inspection being applied to specific traffic, you can add the source and destination here. You can uh, be uh, specific to, to one VM or another, or you can even add uh, subnets or IP ranges here. You can also use IP groups if you are using IP groups on your FIRO policy. And then you can define the protocol, TCP, UDP, ICMP, or any, the, the ports, the, and then the destination IP addresses. If this policy, if I was using a patent policy, I would see the bypass list being inherited from a patent policy, but that's not the case here. Okay, so 
for the demo, I'm going to first run uh, an outbound uh, request using uh, Hexerman user agent. So right now I'm connect. I'm going to connect to the Windows VM. This Windows VM, uh, I will run the curl command. Hold on a sec. Curl. Say. Hexerman. HTTP. Bing.com. SSL. No revoke. So right now I'm going to run this command. It is uh, and I expect to have the Azure Firewall blocking this traffic. As we can see, the the request is going through the Azure Firewall, but it hasn't been accepted yet. Uh, and then it's just retrying. And then once the connection gets reset, uh, I will see uh, the 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 connection was reset. A message saying the request was uh, reset here. It was a failure, right? If I do the same for HTTPS, it will also be blocked because I have the TLS inspection enabled, and then uh, it's going to fail. Receive there, there was a, a fail handshake here, connection fail. So if I do the same on another VM, let me do this. Let me try to copy and paste. Hold on a sec. It's not pasting. OK, let me just type it. Curl minus A. Hexerman. HTTP bing.com. ZSSL no revoke. So right now I'm going to run this command uh, using HTTP only, and this request here will be allowed. And then right now we are seeing it was allowed, but we are seeing the 301 because the the the, the content was moved. And the only reason why this traffic is passing through the firewall is because I have this bypass list allowing traffic from the 10168 to whatever IP address is destination on port 80, right? So this traffic is going through. And one other thing to mention is that once I have the bypass list and the traffic is allowed, uh, we are not going to see any data on the logs showing the, the uh, an alert or an alert or, or a drop log for, for that specific uh, request. And then just showing that if I go to do the same for HTTPS, then it will be blocked as well. Same behavior, so it's just hit try. After a few seconds, I will see the message just blocking this request here. Then if I go back to the logs, uh, let me see the logs here. Okay, uh, this is not the one that I want. This, yeah, actually, this is the one that I want. So this is the uh, signature ID for the hexer man. So we can see the requests here, right? So we see requests coming from the first VM that I tried. So from 100.4, uh, the destination IP was the one of the Bing, uh, Bing.com IP addresses on port 80. It was dropped. It, and then we can also see that the request from the 10168 using 443 was dropped. Uh, we see some drops for the port 80, but the port 80 is only for the first VM, which doesn't have the bypass list applied uh, to, to that VM. Okay, and then here in the logs, we can explore a little bit more information. So we can see, uh, let me minimize this. We can see the source destination, the ports. We can see the action that was applied to that traffic flow. We can see the category, we can see the description of the signature and the severity of the signature, right? Okay, so this is uh, for the outbound traffic. Now I will demonstrate one inbound, uh, the IDPS blocking some inbound traffic. And here I will run a uh, nmap command using the minus A, which runs, uh, it will explore what are the ports open on the Azure firewall and then uh, actually not on the Azure file, on the destination IP address. Uh, in this case, is the IP address of the Azure file. And then once it uh, knows what are the ports open, it will try to run specific uh, scripts to get information from that IP address, right? So let me run this right now. Uh, it takes a few seconds to run. Uh, 
what we are going to see here that is that it, it will show what are the ports open because this Linux VM that I'm connected running the nmap command does have access to the Azure file. So if you remember when I showed the DNet rules, uh, the, the 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 DNet rules were uh, were allowing traffic from this uh, Linux VM. So we will be able to see some data from, for example, for port 80, for port 43, for port 3389. But then the idea is really to go to the to the logs and see what we have there. Actually, if we go to the logs right now, we should be able to see something. So for the logs, I'm going to use the I'm going to filter by the public IP address of the Linux, Linux VM, right? And I'm going to summarize by signature ID and action because it will show a lot of different logs for uh, over the last 24 hours. Let me do over the last four hours only. And uh, let me run this. So I can see that over the last four hours, I have these, uh, you know, signatures and, and actions being uh, logged in, into the Log Analytics workspace, right? Uh, and I know this is from my Linux VM because I'm using the IP address of my Linux VM. If I remove the summarize here, and rerun this command, we will get to know a little bit more information of the attacks that are being dropped by uh, by the ADPS. So if we, we can even uh, order by the severity here and start looking for the severity severity one, two, three. So you're gonna see a lot of nmap script uh, scripting being blocked by the Azure Fire ADPS, right? And then if you want to know more, OK, so these uh, these are the scans being running against port 80, as we can see on the destination port. And then if we scroll down, we're going to see other ports as well. So we see attack, uh, you know, suspicious inbound traffic on port 1433, which is SQL. We have three drops on that. We also have drops on port 443, which is where I have my website uh, listening on. And we also have some scripts being blocked on port 3389, right? So this is all from this test that I ran. Uh, on the nmap output, we'll see, as I said, some information on port 80, 443. This is only because uh, these, uh, the, you know, this, this information came uh, from 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 the nmap scan, but these were not uh, identified as malicious, so we can get some information. It's expected, and. If you if you if we had the IDPS set, set to alert only, we would see a little bit more information here for the uh, SQL, for uh, for example, and then we would be able to see uh, the logs showing the alert only. Uh, one other thing to mention here on the logs is that we can see that we have one alert log, right? If we go to the signature ID, uh, we will see that. Let's go there back to the ADPS signature rules. This is that rule that I uh, signature that I show earlier uh, that is set, you know, uh, by by system definition, it's set to alert uh, to alert. So that's why it's not being blocked. If I wanted to, to make the changes here, I would just edit the rule and change it to alert and deny as I did with the other ones. Uh, one thing to add here is that sometimes it's uh, if you are using a lot of override, sometimes it could be uh, hard to know what what are the overrides that that you are using. So uh, we do have this Azure CLI command here that will give us what are the overrides signature overrides that we have applied to this policy. So right now we do have these four signature overrides. It shows the signature IDs and what's the mode applied to that signature. OK, so then the. Uh, the next part that I want to show is really the. The workbooks. So if we go uh, and this is also good to mention, right? So the, the right now uh, Azure Fire Workbook is embedded in the portal, so you don't need to deploy it anymore by you know from our GitHub of, or from the documentation. Uh, but there is a requirement here. If you're using the workbook, in, if you want to use the workbook which is embedded, you have to be using the resource specific logs because that's the only one that we are uh, making you know built in on on the Azure portal. 
So once you click on the workbook, you select the Azure Firewall. Let me just make sure to select the right uh, Log Analytics workspace. I will change the time range here to the last 12 hours. And then I go to the IDPS tab. And then let me make it a little bit smaller. And then in the IDPS uh, tab, we're going to be able to see some charts showing the IDPS per action. So we can see how many drops we have in the last 12 hours, how many alerts we had in the last 20, uh, 12 hours. We can also see by protocol. Uh, so all these are TCP. We can also see the count by, you know, uh, by, by signature. So we see a lot of 64% uh, of this specific signature, 209358. Uh, it, it means 107 requests. And then we can also uh, check by the source uh, IP addresses, right? If we scroll down, we will be able to see uh, the uh, account you know, per action, account per protocol, and then account per signature, and also per IP addresses. So you can uh, see, you know, what are the destination IP addresses and and this and, and the the filter by source IP addresses here on the list. So it helps you on the investigation if you want to understand what's going on and what why are you uh, you are seeing so many, you know, uh, requests from that specific machine or from that specific IP address being uh, dropped by uh, IDPS. Down here we have a chart showing, uh, uh, you know, the the count over time. So over the last 12 hours, we can see the number of uh, requests being 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 uh, blocked or or alert by by DPS. And then down here we have the raw data, but the raw data showing per uh, per region. So it 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 helps uh, having an, an idea where the attacks are coming from or. Uh, what destinations, uh, you know, your internal machines are trying to connect uh, and, you know, this request being flagged as uh, malicious or uh, matching some of the ADPS signatures. And then the last thing here just to demonstrate uh, is on the policy analytics. So in the policy analytics, we, we uh, if we go to the insights tab, we will be able to see under potentially malicious sources, uh, all the Threat intelligence or IDPS events. If we click on IDPS events, we have a count here for the IDPS. So just just an example, right? This IP address is the IP address of our Linux VM where we are running all the NMAP scans, and these are all the events that we are seeing coming from that VM. So it also helps to you know uh, narrow uh, your investigation to if you want to see what are the IDPS, what are, what what are the uh, what are the ADPS signatures and what are the destinations, you know, uh, the, the most events uh, per IP address. So in this case, we know the 172 is the source IP address. So we have a lot of events coming from that IP address and we may take actions like blocking this IP address uh, and, you know, using the the, the network or uh, the, the network rules or the DNET rules, not, not allowing traffic from this IP address here. But yeah, that's it for the demo today. I hope it helped and we have uh, three more minutes for the questions. Great, thank you. Um, the team's doing great with answering questions. We do have a few um, worth asking. The first one is during traffic decryption, does IDPS re-encrypt with the same certificate chain? How does this work for websites that require certificate pinning? Uh, it uses the, you know, the Azure file will establish the connection to the website, but it will use the, you know, uh, the 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 Azure file trusts on the certificates that that are publicly published, right? So it will decrypt the traffic and then use it its own uh, own certificate to issue a new certificate to the client. So when you see on the client, you see the Azure the Azure file certificate, uh, and then. The connection between the Azure file to, to the destination VM will be using the destination uh, certificate only. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is: Are the IDPS modes global or on a per rule basis? The IDPS configuration is global, 
Uh, today, we don't have the option to enable ATPS or change the mode of the signatures per rule. So once it's enabled, it's going to be applied to all the traffic. Uh, we can use the bypass list if we want to, uh, you know, uh, exclude ATPS inspection on specific uh, specific flows. But once it's uh, it's configured, it's going to be applied to all the rules. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is, when IDPS events are triggered, do the logs provide a packet capture of the protocol traffic, which can be exported and inspected for indicators of compromise within a tool such as Wireshark? No, it's not a, it's not a feature today. Uh, we would like to learn more about this. So if you can uh, post, you know, uh, share your use case using the links for feedback, we, we, we would like to learn more about that. But today, once it's logged, uh, the only information that we will see is the log that's uh, recorded on the Log Analytics workspace. Great, thank you. And the last question we have is, does IDPS only apply to traffic that is TLS inspected? Say again, sorry? Does IDPS only apply to traffic that is TLS inspected? No, it applies to many different protocols. As I showed, uh, we do have signatures that are applied to TCP. We do have uh, some other that are applied to HTTP, right? The thing here is that if you have uh, uh, encrypted traffic, then you have to have TLS inspection to know what's within the packet and then uh, run the, the, the IDPS analysis. But if you have unencrypted traffic coming over uh, HTTP or even TCP requests, then the IDPS is also able to uh, inspect the, the traffic. And once a uh, signature is matched, depending on your configuration, it will be alert or alert in the night. Great, uh, that seems to be all the question, uh, questions we have time for. So with that, I'd like to thank you, Andrew and Gustavo for being our guests and for sharing the great information with our community. Also, thank you to the Q&A team who helped us with answering the questions and providing the resourceful information. To all the listeners still on the line, if you're someone who wishes to aid in the protection of the world from cyber threats and desire to have a say in shaping our strategies, blueprints, and recommendations, then we invite you to become part of our security community. Together, we can make a global impact. So join us at aka.ms slash security community. This is also where you'll be notified about the upcoming webinars, events, and other announcements. Also, please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash Azure NetSec feedback. For those of you who may have additional questions on the topic we just covered or other product related questions, please feel free to raise them on our Microsoft Tech Community discussion space at aka.ms slash ANS community. Thank you all for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.